Welcome to America's Healer with Dr. Jason West. Dr. West and his guest experts are about to open your eyes to a whole new perspective on the medical world. Now, here is your host, world-renowned Dr. Jason West. All right, you guys, thank you, thank you for the intro. I'm so excited to have a special guest, my doctor on the show, Dr. Scott Nelson, and we're going to be talking about energy and and when I first started practice, I thought everything was biomechanics. I thought it was biochemistry. I thought it was hormones. The longer I'm in practice, the more I recognize it is about energy. So I'm excited to bring a renowned, just accomplished energy healer to the show. We're also wanting to give a recognition to our sponsor, which is the West Clinic and the West Clinic team, which is everybody over there that helps us to get these amazing patient outcomes. And of course, to our patient base, that teaches us how to really implement everything that we've learned. Like I learned a lot in school, then my dad taught well, taught me, hey, you're going to learn a lot more from patients. So thank you to the West Clinic sponsor. Also our other sponsor, Personalize NX. We make custom supplements for people. Personalize NX help us to do that. And uh, that's how we can make some really nice uh really interventions for people. So last week we talked about the road back from COVID. This week um, with my guest, the two-time Doctor of the Year Award winner, Dr. Nelson, I'm excited to really talk about energy. And so before we get in that, Dr. Nelson, let's just go give everybody a quick overview of you've been in healthcare a long time. How did you start this process and walk us through a little bit of of that journey because I suspect a lot of it is going to be similar to me. You started off thinking, oh, all the answers are in this pathway, and then you recognize that one size doesn't fit all. Well, it's good to be here. Um, actually, my my introduction, this probably came from a little bit different, basically similar in that my father was also a naturopath. So he, I grew up in a uh, seeing alternative care worked and seeing the patients that he saw and he had patients from all over the country that would come and see him and and do the types of things that he was doing and so it was kind of a normal situation for me to see that type of a thing and be exposed to it Um, so then as I got closer to trying to figure out what I wanted to do you know it it kind of turned out to be uh a pathway between two different careers and when I found out I really couldn't go the the other way I said well then I guess I'm going to continue with what I'm doing and dad really wanted me to come into practice with him and so that that was kind of a good thing and and uh so I I was kind of pushed in that direction well I guess not pushed that way uh he encouraged me to be able to figure out which way I wanted to go and um so it was kind of a, a, a journey as far as um I it was just kind of a normal thing it wasn't like I had any major thing happened to me and I had some miracle thing occurred in my life it was just like oh this is what you do this is a, this is a great uh, way of doing things now I know you are a very accomplished acupuncturist I've experienced it I've seen you do amazing outcomes in the clinic but you started off in the chiropractic realm then you did an acupuncture program then you did a naturopathic program or maybe I've got them backwards You did an orthopedic program. You've done nutrition program. We've been a lot of the same programs together. So when you started working with people, I feel like it was always kind of a holistic approach. Like, hasn't your whole career been like, I'm going to treat everything that's wrong with people. I'm going to try and balance them. And isn't that kind of how it started? Yeah. The, uh, as far as acupuncture goes, I was actually still in high school when I went to my first acupuncture seminar. My dad, who was a naturopath, was also blind. So I was kind of his eyes, so I went to the, a lot of the seminars. So technically, I guess my education started about 50 years ago, <laughs> which seems to be a long time. But uh, So that was kind of an introduction into acupuncture was back then. Really, um, you know, I saw dad using it in his practice seeing the patients do it the kind of the reason that the holistic idea was is that like your dad what i remember of him and my dad anything that came in the office you could fix i mean you just didn't you didn't say oh well that's something i can't do anything about you just looked at what they had and the problems that they occurred and you figure out what the solution was and 
it got them better. So with that, like I love the acupuncture component. I came in at way lo- longer, we're way after you. I, I was, I came in in 2000 and 2001, and I think that, you know, you're in back in the 70s doing acupuncture, which was really kind of the the forefront of acupuncture. I think acupuncture kind of got a little bit of fire underneath it when Nixon went to China, and I was that was in the 70s, 72 or 74 or something like that, and so. When we started talking about acupuncture, I was like, oh, this is, you know, really, really out there. But to give someone kind of an overview of acupuncture and how we're able to change energies and how it's different from traditional medicine, like, how would you respond to that? Like, if someone said, well, why would I want to do acupuncture? You would say. Well, I I think a lot of people want to, you know, explain how this works. I think is the question I get mostly in the clinic, you know, when we do an acupuncture on first time people. And, and today was a, a, an example of that. I was working on a patient and she says, I've never had acupuncture before. I'm excited. What do I do? Which is kind of a little bit different than when I first started acupuncture uh, clinically in the eighties, you know, you kind of had to try to convince people that's what you wanted because they were like, Ooh, you're going to do what? Right, but it really in. hadn't been part of the the cultural psyche that much, and so. But now it is, and and it makes it a much easier thing. And so, pretty much for me, is you're moving energy from a high situation to a normal situation, or from a low situation up to a normal situation. So I think of a a lock where you put a, a boat comes in, and they've got to change the the water level to meet whatever's on the other side. So it's either you're higher than where you're going or you're lower than where you're going, and they're going to raise up the water or lower the water so that you can get through the lock and get on your way. And so that's kind of, to me, pretty basic as far as what acupuncture does. It just moves energy, and it moves energy and blood at the same time. Okay, and when we talk about energy in the office, like there's what I said in a, in the promo for the radio show, bursting with energy, you know, most are treatments that most people don't know about. And I really believe, I really think that the reason why we start developing illnesses and sickness and symptoms is because our energy goes off, whether we get too little, or like you said, with too much uh, or too little in an area. But one of the things that is fascinating to me about acupuncture points is how much power and how much, ability to we can change physiology with those points and that's part one that I wanted you to comment on part two what's fascinating is we do a lot of neural therapy and and PNIT therapy and stuff like that and it's it's funny the Germans came by you know 2,000 years later and saying we we discovered these points and when you look at their treatment points they're acupuncture points Right. So, so tell us a little bit about uh, acupuncture points and how your experience, you found them to be so powerful in, in diseases. Cause we, we've had discussions at the office and I've said, well, look, if you were stuck on an Island and you can, Dr. Nelson, you only had one thing to do, what would you do? And you're like, uh, I'm taking my acupuncture deals. So, so let's walk through that. Well, that's, that's the biggest thing is it does have a, a big influence. And if you know how to move things and that makes a a big difference on how you can affect either a symptom or, or a disease state or whatever that may be. And there's a lot of, there's some pretty amazing points that you can use to, I mean, there's rescue points that you can use to help bring somebody up from fainting to consciousness. And there's some really good points that we would call command points that can affect bigger, larger areas and so forth. So I think the biggest thing is understanding that and really to understand acupuncture and why we can do what we can do is also thinking about the Chinese uh, culture. And so acupuncture is really related to how their daily activities are. So if you wanted to get water, you could either go to a well, to dip a bucket down and pull out a little bit of water. And so that point, that a well point, may draw out a small amount of water. You can go to a, a, a spring point. Well, now a spring's going to be flowing a lot more water. So we, you go to spring point, you're going to move more energy. You're going to move more, more fluid. Or you can go to a, a river point. And then, then you can go to a sea point. And you think about a sea point and how much water is in the sea and what, what you can do with it and how much you can move it. So there's just, uh, there's just a lot of areas that if you know how to move those, that energy from point a to point b 
you can make some pretty miraculous things happen because our system is set up so it it runs off of energy or electricity, I guess would be the easiest way. Everything's either got a positive or negative charge and you're going to move energy from one place to another. And and acupuncture and meridian system and, and what we're doing is moving energy. It's just moving it through either a, a typically the yin and yang situation is you have chi and blood you know chi being the yang component and blood being the yin component so those two are have to be in balance and those two move together i'm embarrassed to say that i've been through a lot of acupuncture training i've had my certified acupuncture license for over 20 years i've been to a continuing education program and i always thought well points where you get well not the well that you dip things in like i'm just kind of processing going man I'm sure that they said that. I just missed it. But I'm fascinated on so many times when we're in our team meetings or we're talking about patients and you'll give a uh, example or a comparison of like the liver feeds the kidney or the kidney feeds the liver, the kidney feeds the body. Uh, so many things happen in the spleen, in the thymus, which are neglected uh, organs in medicine. But I just would love for you to explain to everybody, like if someone came in with Let's talk about uh, a musculoskeletal condition first. If someone came in with a sprained ankle, how you'll be applying acupuncture versus a systemic or metabolic thing. So let's let's talk about ankles because I've seen you turn around ankles really fast. So if someone comes in with a sprained ankle, how are you going to apply your acupuncture knowledge and your treatments for that to help them get better? Okay. So with the, you know, we think about, okay, what was injured, you know, when we do a sprained ankle, that, you know, we've got a connective tissue, we've got a joint capsule, we've got possibly tendons, we've got, um, you know, ligaments, those types of things. And in Chinese medicine, the liver controls the ligaments and the joint capsule. So that now you've already know that we've got an insult to the liver because the liver, that's, their, it's a controlling part of it. Are there muscles involved? You know, the, the spleen controls the muscles of the extremities. So if you in the process of spraining your ankle, did you pull your hamstring? Did you pull, you know, did something else happen uh, that may look at? So as you're making your evaluation, you're looking at what systems were involved in the accident. And then there's points that we use that are what we call trauma points. That are just, you know, when people have trauma or have injury, then there's certain acupuncture points that we can initiate that will help the body deal with that trauma and calm that stress that's been affected. Because as things um, affect our body from the outside, then we also have to deal with how, we, how we're going to protect ourselves from it. So you guys, as we are getting ready to head into our first break, we're talking about energy and energy medicine. With my guest, Dr. Scott Nelson, we're talking about bursting with energy treatments that most people don't know about. We are going to get into the metabolic component of uh, you know disease and conditions and stuff and acupuncture. We're also going to be talking about how touch therapy and manipulation and the nervous system. We're going to be talking some chiropractic therapy. And then one of the f favorite treatments that we're doing in the office is neural therapy how to relieve chronic pain and illnesses through stimulating different points, which almost all the time happen to be acupuncture points. And then also in the last segment, we're going to be saying um, we're, we're coming into things like electrical stimulation, science surge, inferential, diathermy, ultrasound, magnet therapy, laser therapy. This is the Dr. Jason West America's Healer Program sponsored by the West Clinic. And we are so delighted to have such an expert with us. As we head into the break, you guys, we are going to come back with some ton of great information on how when your energy levels are right, you're going to feel better, and then how to make it so that you don't have energy vampires in your life. We're also going to be talking a little bit about that, mainly, well, I, I better save it for the next segment. So we'll pick you guys up on the next segment on America's Healer Radio. You are listening to America's Healer with Dr. Jason West. If you have a question for Dr. West or his guests, feel free to join us on the show at 866-472-5792. That's 866-472-5792. Now, back to the show. 
All right, you guys, we are listening to the, we're putting a show on, on bursting with energy treatments that most people don't know about. We talked in the first segment a little bit about Dr. Nelson's history. He's a guest on the show um, and how he got into healthcare and followed kind of his dad's pathway, similar to what I did, but then branched out on a little bit on his own, how he was exposed to acupuncture in high school. I, I shouldn't say this, but I have to back in the 70s and then graduated in the late 70s, started practice. Our paths merged almost eight years ago when we decided to do some work together, and Dr. Nelson does a ton of energy work inside of our office. So we started off with, you know what, people that get sick, usually, at least I think how it works, is you run out of energy, and then you start borrowing things from your adrenal glands and your thyroid, and and then those glands get wiped out, and then a lot of times we can be, become susceptible to infection and chronic infection leads to neurobehavioral and neurodegenerative and autoimmune and fatiguing illness. And I think it's such an important part in our patient workups and our patient treatments that we try to restore energy. And so that's what we were talking about in the first segment. We talked about what would happen if someone sprained an ankle and Dr. Nelson was saying, look, this is how we're trying to put that energy back in place. And now my follow-up question is going to be like when someone is really tired and they're just worn out and we're trying like maybe it's not a a classic diagnosis of a a traditional Western medicine thing, but so many times when our patients, when we ask them, well, what's wrong? And then we're like, well, I'm just tired. I don't feel very good. And so when we start trying to move that energy around, Dr. Nelson, walk us through how we would how you kind of evaluate and what you would do for someone that it just feels like they're stuck in first gear. They can't get to where they were. They're living in, you know, willpower and they're making their do some things. But if, when they're honest, they're like, man, I just, I just don't have any juice. So how how do you put zip or pizzazz or fuel or juice back in people? Well, I think the interesting part of the whole process is the fact that when I first came into practice in in 1980, Stress was probably the fifth on my list of things that I had to worry about when a patient came in and says, I've got these problems, this problem, this problem. And stress was on, that was down number five. Now stress is like the number one factor. That's, you know, that's what people are coming in for. We're so plugged in, we're so hooked up, we're so, you know, we're like, you know, people are watching us constantly 100% of the time that that we are being stressed to death. And, um, I think the thing that we've got to to stem back a little bit for what sets up some of this information that, or the reason why we treat it the way we are is in Chinese medicine, the Wei Qi or our defensive Qi <clears throat> sits right underneath our skin layer. So in that sub-Q area, that's where our defensive Qi is. That's where our, uh, that's our protection from our for our body. So when we think of things of external things that can affect us, you know, hot, cold, wind, uh, dampness, dryness, all those things that we're exposed to from the outside can affect how, you know, how well that strength or our defensive chi is. And if our defensive chi becomes weakened, then all those external factors now start breaking down or enter into the body and start causing some problems. And so when you're under stress all the time, you're, you're constantly beating on that, our protective layer and pretty quick, it kind of gives up. So to help someone restore or, or to move the energies, like someone has a deficient layer or they have a chink in the armor, and I've heard some rules about, you know, one of the, one of the most obvious ones is that one acupuncture treatment isn't going to fix people. So I also, one of my teachers would say, you know, kind of however many years you've had the condition is kind of an indicator of, of, let's see, months and years is how many treatments you need. So if you've had it for, you know, two years, it's 24 treatments. And I don't think that that's always accurate, but it's not something that is fixed in one treatment. So to kind of help people understand what is a reasonable time period to let acupuncture do its thing would be what? Well, you know, in in chronic conditions, I would say, you know, for every three years of Ill- illness, it's going to take at least a year of treatment. And the reason I say that is because you've you've gone through the various seasons during the year, and each one of these organs are more active during certain times of year. You know, in the spring, it's your liver, in the summer, it's your, su- it's your heart, and so forth. 
And so as you travel through time, through those different seasons, you're, you're going to affect those organ systems. And so a chronic disease is something that's occurred over time has now affected all the systems of your body. And so now you've got to figure out where the root problem is and how do we start working on that process of reversing that disease state so that we can get the energy to move where it needs to be. We need it to be able to go from one system to the next system, the next system. So there's a, there's a priority in, the, in, in Chinese medicine of how energy moves from one place to the next. And we have to move energy in those directions so that we get that nice flow of energy so that uh, things function. Okay, so using that kind of as a yardstick of how to get energies to move, walk people through kind of what, how you apply the needles, and sometimes you're manipulating them, sometimes you're turning them just a little bit. It's always fascinating when I see a master work on someone. So just kind of walk us through that because it's just fascinating to me. Okay, yeah, so as... Once you've kind of gone through, you know, some part of our most important part is, you know, first determine out what the root problem is. you got to figure out where you, where do you want to put the needles? You know, is it, a li- is it a liver deficiency or a spleen deficiency or what have you? And then at that point, that kind of dictates where you're going to put the needles. And there's a couple different rules or thoughts in the process of needling. Um, and I've used many techniques over the years. And like anything, you, you kind of change as, as you see uh, your results in what you do. And so as, as you manipulate a needle, you're either causing a stimulation of chi or, or uh, sedating chi. So you're either going to stimulate or sedate. And then the other rule is if you just put the needle in and not do anything with it, and just let your body determine whether it wants to go, where it wants to do, mm-hmm. where it's going. So... I'm finding now more and more, I'm just putting the needle in and letting the body deser- decide, you know, I need to move it from here to here when, and not me being the one that says, no, you're going to do it whether you like it or not. I'm going to, I'm going to stimulate this needle, bring in chi, I'm going to push this hard and that's okay as long as you know where you're going. But if you try to push energy from some place that just doesn't have it, it's kind of like trying to beat a dead horse, you know, and it's, it's not going to be able to do it. So maybe a, a off-topic question just a little bit. I'm just fascinated and curious. When I was going through my acupuncture training, one of my instructors was saying that, uh, you know, the, that you want to do an adequate patient history or a great patient history, and, do every, and then the best acupuncturist would take one needle and put it in and would fix everything. <laughs> and, and, and the longer I'm in practice, I think the less likely that is. But... Other times I had an, a different instructor saying, well, I use lots of needles. So like, you know, I'm going to use 20, 30, 40 different needles. I'm just curious on what we tell everybody. Is, is it the less amount of needles that you use? Can you get too many needles? Is there kind of like a, a target number of points that you treat in a session? Uh, I'm asking mainly for me. Okay. Well, I think the Holy Grail would be, yeah, I could, I could, have everything nailed down to just one point and I could go over there and put that one needle in and bang, you know, there it's all done. It's all balanced. Everybody's happy and the person gets up and walks away and, and they're just happy. Um, I also think that using too many needles can create too much stimulation as well. And so I'm, I'm kind of a big, I'm more of a component of using as few needles as possible to get the job done. Okay. And so if I can do a treatment and I can do it with four needles, then that's all I'm going to do it with. If I need to do a treatment and I have to use 10 needles, then I use 10 needles. So, But I, I don't want to put a needle in every acupuncture point on a person's body and and then have them crash and burn. You know? No, so and I understand that. How many acupuncture points are there? There's like 360, you know, plus all the extra points. and And then depending on... There's other uh, different techniques that have points in their system. So, yeah, there's a, just a ton of different areas. Basically, any place you could stick a needle on a body, you can, you can find something. So, you guys, if you're just joining our program, it's the bursting with energy treatments most people don't know about. So, we, are, we see a lot of chronic conditions in our office of people that are out of hope or out of time or they tried the medical 
regimen and, and the medications or the surgical intervention didn't help them or the chemo or the radiation doesn't work. And so one of the things we wanted people to know about, and I think Dr. Nelson would agree with me, like one of the most frustrating comments that we hear from people is, oh, wow, I wish I would have known you or doctors like you before I started down that medical pathway. So one motivation behind our radio program is that we wanted to talk about how we can balance energy. It's it's the, one of the most common things that we see from patients saying, I'm just out of energy. Again, as Dr. Nelson said, when he started practice, stress was like the fifth most thing. Now it's the first most common thing. And before we move into manual therapy and how manual therapy affects uh, chronic conditions, uh, Dr. Nelson, any golden nuggets that you have about what to do for stress? I mean, my observation is, is you're one of the least stressed people that I know. So how do you do that? Well, my, my stress came really early in my life when I, I went to college at 17. And uh, I'd come home and I'd be sick. And my dad finally says, man, I, I'm sorry I can't help you, but you're just stressing yourself out. You're just putting your, too much pressure on yourself, so you got to figure this out. And so I had to learn really early, early in my life what you have to do, what's really important, what do you need to worry about, what don't you need to worry about. And so, um, you know, I've got my own philosophy on for myself personally, and um, I, I think the uh, uh, one of the girls at the office gave me a, a, a piece of paper, and I d- I've got actually got it hanging up in the office, and it just says, you know, not my circus, not my monkeys. And so I think that kind of says it in that whole, uh, in, in a nutshell, is that you've got to really decide, is this really something that's important to worry about? Is this really something you can do? If I can't change it, why worry about it? If I can change it, then I worry about it. But if it's something that I can't make happen or can't change, it's just not worth my time and effort to worry about it. You're just stressing yourself out. You're you're making your adrenal glands um, just fatigue out, and now you're just playing in that, that sympathetic, that fright-flight mode all the time, and it's just, it will wear you out, and then you just crash and burn. All right, not my monkey, not my circus. I, I like it. All right, so... Moving into the next segment, we've got, you know, five or six minutes to cover this. Um, energy. So we, we started off, I thought, with the most obvious way to move energy, and that's with acupuncture. But there's also some biomechanical work that we can do and people should be aware of, of using, um, you know, basically the, the adjustment, the chiropractic work to improve energy, to help uh, nervous system flow, to decompress areas that are jammed up. So... Dr. Nelson, when, when in their office, you do a lot of the manipulative therapies and, and work in the office. Why do you tell people that it's healthy for them to, to get things lined up? Well, I think the, when we talk about the nervous system, when we talk about the spine particularly, you know, uh, in my, my philosophy is that um, the reason we have an impingement or a, a problem is that we get a fixation or that segment isn't moving correctly or it's moved in the muscles and are holding it in a spasm area so that now it's creating pressure and when you create pressure especially on nerves it really diminishes the function so you know just as light a pressure on your cheek you know that's a five millimeter mercury you know that on a nerve root you know you can diminish function quite a you know 50 percent they say so if you get any pressure at all, and we're not talking a lot of pressure, this is, you know, pressure can be even the minutest amount, even just from inflammation or just from swelling. And so we've got to release that pressure. We got to take that. When we talk about the spine, we got to increase the mobility and get it. So it's moving within its normal range of motion, which then takes that pressure off either the nerve, uh, the blood supply that runs along with the nerve, you know, so you got all those factors involved. Um, when that when that nerve is impinged or is pressure, it can't function right. You don't get the signal going down. You don't get that um, information getting to where it needs to go. So give us some examples of some things that you like to treat with chiropractic manipulative therapy. Wow. Um, kind of about anything. That's yeah, I know what's that. As soon as I said the question, I'm like, that's way too broad because it's headaches, it's stomach problems, it's back aches, it's earaches. Well, it's- I, I guess for, for me, it's kind of, and for you as well, you know, the difference between, you know, 
I don't just have a, a, a degree in chiropractic. I don't just have a naturopathic degree. I don't just have an acupuncture degree. So we, you know, what we've done over the time is both you and I and, and our dads and everything, you know, we've created a situation where you gotta get, you got to look at a lot of different places to get all the answers. And not only not one place has all the answers and the more you can combine those things that we do so the more we combine our acupuncture manipulative therapy uh, injection therapy nutritional therapy you know all these things that we do that's where we get the magic that's where we get all these things happening is is the combination of things and our experience you know um, the amount of years we've been in practice and what we've seen and what we've had to do and you know, when the, when the pressure is on you and you have to perform, you got to do it. <laughs> so we are on America's Healer Radio Show. I'm with my guest, uh, Dr. Scott Nelson. We're getting ready to go into our second break. And just as a recap, what we've been talking about is energy medicine and how do we move energy medicine into the right area or to take too much energy away from that area is really one of the benefits of, of looking at a comprehensive or holistic approach. So we do that with a couple of different ways. We, we do that with acupuncture. We're either taking energy from high to normal or from low to normal. We do that with chiropractic adjustment, manipulative therapy, wanting to help with circulation. We want to help with nerve flow. We want to stimulate the body to heal itself. And then in our next segment, what we're going to be talking about is two other types of therapies of how to help people. And this is a lot of what people don't know about. I mean, most people have heard of acupuncture. Not everyone has done it. I think probably more people have, have not done it than done it. We've talked to chiropractic therapy, which a certain segment of the population has done. And then we're going to talk about a little or known therapy called neural therapy. And then also some some accelerator therapies that we can do with electricity and laser and magnets. So it's the Dr. Jason West show and America's healer with our guest, Dr. Nelson. And we're going to be back in just a minute. You're listening to America's healer with Dr. Jason West. If you have a question for Dr. West or his guests, feel free to join us on the show at 866-472-5792. That's 866-472-5792. Now, back to the show. All right, everyone. We've got some really good learning that we've experienced so far. We're talking about bursting with energy treatments that most people don't know about. When people get sick, they get tired. One of the first things that disappears is energy. I didn't mention this in the previous segments, but I think Dr. Nelson would agree with me that when specifically when it gets to pain and dysfunction, pain steals energy and then people's energy crash and then they're looking for crutches and the crutches are sugar and chocolate and caffeine and energy drinks and alcohol and nicotine and all of that. And one of the ways that we try and help people is by putting everything back in balance. So we want to talk about acupuncture and acupuncture points. We also want to talk about mechanical points with the chiropractic therapy. We've covered that in segment one and segment two. Now what we're going to do is shift gears just a little bit and talk about some additional ways to help balance people. One of them is this amazing therapy called neural therapy. And then there's kind of a cousin or a subset of that called perineural injection therapy, PNIT therapy, that gets nerves and stuff to reset. I'm excited to have an in-house expert, a gifted healer. I've seen him do medical miracles inside of the office for almost a decade now. I can't believe it's been that long. I mean, it's literally eight years coming up in a month. And uh, so I'm joined with two-time Doctor of the Year Award winner, Dr. Nelson, who also has a Lifetime Achievement Chiropractic Service Award, a, a frequent lecturer in the acupuncture world and acupuncture circles. So without further ado, let's start getting into different ways to stimulate energy by doing something that you're really good at, doing neural therapy and perineural therapy. But let's just start off with neural therapy I talk about it on every patient success story. You talk about it on every question answer period, every radio show. I'm talking on neural therapy, but now we get to get an explanation from a master healer. Dr. Nelson, what is neural therapy and how do you use it? Well, neuro, neural therapy is, again, you know, we're talking about the nervous system. 
and we know that the nervous system is connected to pr- pretty much every cell of our body is is regulated by the nervous system, whether it be directly through a nerve innervation or directly or by the nerve causing certain things to happen in the cell tissues and the cells so forth. So as we affect the nerves, then we're going to affect each ind- individual cell as far as what it's able to do. So we're going to either turn it on or turn it off. And the thing that we like about neural therapy is as we, as we in- do that injection, uh, sometimes we're injecting a, a nerve branch or we may be, you know, but, or we may just be working subcutaneously in that, that same place that we talked earlier about that defensive chi or the way chi being just underneath the surface. And that's also where a lot of our little small, um, you know, nerve endings are, are there. So that when we uh, hit certain areas, again, of the body, we can create an effect to that, that area. And the one thing that neural therapy is so great about is that once we get in a chronic disease state, once we get into a problem where we're having the same symptom over and over and over and over again, our body, you know, it's, our brain just says, you know, hey, this is like a nagging kid or this is like something that's happening over and over. You just tune it out. And the way our body can turn that, tune that out is create a reflex arc. So the information comes from your hands, so to speak, out to the spine, and then it goes right back to your hand as a pain impulse. And so it really never gets up to the brain to say, hey, what's, what's really going on? Because it's been happening for such a long time. And if we can break that, that reflex arc, or we can break that information from traveling just to the spine and so that now your body has to now reevaluate what's going on, then we can get the body to say, hey, there's something here. we got to do something about it. Yeah, so I call that the nerve reboot therapy. You know, your memory, your nerves get memories. So patients can come in the office and they be a rancher, a rodeo guy, and they'll be out practicing roping and they'll rope the cow and then they'll get the, the rope caught around their finger and the cow takes off, pulls their finger off, and they'll say, man, my fingers, they'll come in the office, my fingers kill me, even though it's not attached to the body. We call that phantom limb syndrome. Or sometimes people will get, you know, shingles and they'll get this infection along the nerve that comes out. Then the infection goes away and yet the nerve's still telling the brain, I hurt, I hurt, I hurt. So we call that post-herpetic syndrome. But it also can happen with other conditions. Like the body can have this idea, oh, well, I'm sick. I've been sick for years. So being sick is normal. And so we use neural therapy to reset that. There's also another type of therapy very similar to this called perineural injection therapy that I know you've received some advanced training on, and and we use a little bit different admixture for that. But walk us through a little bit about perineural injection therapy because it's really powerful for shutting off pain as well. Yes, and one of the things that I really enjoy about perineural therapy is that many times we get almost instantaneous results. I mean, you can just make things change immediately. And and that's probably the biggest surprise factor that the patients will have. They'll just go like, whoa, what did you just do to me? Right, you flipped a switch. <laughs> and, <laughs> and you just get it like, oh, this really surprised look. But really what you're doing with that is you're, you're finding where the nerve comes up through the fascia. And where the nerve comes through the fascial membrane and through that muscle areas, and it, it can get constricted. And so now, again, as we talked about, nerves are very sensitive to any kind of pressure. And so if you even just get um, a tightness in that, in that fascial plane or the muscular plane and it starts creating p- pressure, that nerve cannot function properly. So it's kind of like taking a garden hose and you just bend that garden hose and you just kink it until nothing comes out the other end. And if we take the injection and we put it close to that nerve as we can then what it does is it relaxes that fascial plane and that, that muscle there and now that as that pressure comes off it's just like unkinking that hose and now that the nerve impulse is going down that nerve can now go to whatever muscle whatever organ whatever is being affected by that yeah and it's not a deep injection like how deep are you most of the injections are, are just sub subsurface you know and we do do some that are a little bit deeper. We have to hit, go to a, 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 a you know, a, a deeper area around the pelvis or a deeper a joint area. But most of it is 
fairly surface. Okay, so when someone comes in with a chronic illness, we're trying to help reset the energies. We're doing acupuncture. We're doing neural therapy. Like, we're rotating those. Uh, Frequently, people get, you know, adjusted head to tail is what I call. We just want everything to flow really well. Then we're using this neural therapy or this nerve reboot or nerve reset therapy. But I also wanted to touch base on some of the other, I I would say, you know, electrical and energy components in the office that aren't necessarily done by using an injection or a needle. We're using the proper applications of electricity and magnet therapy and ultrasound. So, again, I'm one of the things that you're really good at. Let's walk people through what we would use electricity for to help with energy. Let's start with there, then we'll move on to ultrasound. But Electricity, how, why, how and why and where do you use it? Well, we can use electricity in, in a lot of different ways. We can use it in a situation where we're creating enough electricity or a strong enough impulse that we're actually causing muscle contraction. And so we can actually work a muscle. We can actually cause it to physically contract and, and make that movement there. And we can also use uh, a, a lower um, frequency and down to the point where a person just can't even feel it, but yet we're still introducing that uh, the electrical component. We're still causing that positive negative field to occur. And so we're moving energy or we're moving fluids from one area to another. We're moving ions from one place to another. We just got to remember that everything runs on, on I guess, electricity in some, in some point. Uh, we have positive and negative charges on our s- cell membrane, and things to be able to move from a positive to a negative charge have to be able to pass through that membrane, and so we have to change the, the charges so that can occur. And so w- as we use those different types of currents, then we're able to move fluids through there. One of the old things we used to do a bunch was ionophoresis, and we used to put a positive and a negative charge on a body, and then we would de- use something that had either a negative charge, and it would travel towards the positive pole on the pad, and so we, or vice versa, and so we could move certain chemicals or certain things through a system because it's of the attraction. Yeah, I remember my dad doing that with iodine and and magnesium and a Lugol solution. I can remember him dipping pads and putting them in different places, and I think. Uh, the really why we kind of got away from that a little bit is is the a lot of the machines that have that have the old tubes in it and stuff like that and and then when they break down the new generation of electricians are like no 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 we have to have a chip we don't we don't work with the tubes but I can remember that also a different way to help with energy blockages and stuff is is using sound waves or ultrasound so how do you use ultrasound to help people well your ultrasound is more of when we think of sound waves, it's going to be more of a mechanical in uh, uh, presentation. We're going to actually create a sound wave that's going to hit a tissue and then vibrate it. Uh, the sound is going to reverberate out. So I, I call ultrasound more of a cellular massage where we're going to massage the tissue, deep tissue. We're, it's not surface. We can go fairly deep with it. And we can create a massage, and, and in creating massages, we can we can move tissue, we can move fluid. Well, not necessarily tissue, but moving fluid from, you know, if it's swollen, we can open up the, the, the drainage, the lymphatic system, we can open up the circulation. So we're basically doing a cellular massage when we deal with the ultrasound. So we've got electrical stimulation that we can put and, and really hammer the nerves. It also can make the muscles contract. We have ultrasound that's like a cellular massage. We're vibrating the cells together with these very minimal but high-frequency sound movements. Then we've got magnet and laser. So in the last, you know, we've got about two minutes here. Take a minute to talk about magnet and a minute to talk laser. Well, yeah, again, with the magnet therapy, you're, you're creating a positive charge, just like you do with a lot of things. We're just using a different mode or different machine in order to do that uh, for that process to occur and um, again with the laser we're using the light therapy you know light is uh, you know creating a, a, a change in the tissue and certain tissue will is more responsive to certain wavelengths of light and certain colors will affect certain organ systems so light is a very important thing you know um, in order just to 
to just to be healthy and, and just for us to utilize our vitamin D, we were, we were expected to go out and get a little sunshine, you know, with those. So there's, there's something with the, the presence of light to, and the different frequencies are related to different organ systems and different tissue will be more stimulated or, or not due to the frequency or the, the wavelength that we're using. Okay. And so to wrap up, trying to help people know about treatments that most people don't know about, uh, bursting with energy. One of the things you talked about is stress, you know, not my circus, not my monkeys. Uh, I'm going to chuckle about that for a long ways in the future. But to, you've been in, in practice um, um, several decades, more decades than I have, and I've been in two and a half. So your takeaway, if people are across the street or across the country, and if there was like a, a nugget that you could give them to be healthy, to, to just, just overall apply this and, and there should be some improvement, what, what would it be? Well, I would say the biggest thing is just to unplug. You know, you've got to unplug for a while. You get, you can't be so connected. You can't be so con- stressed out from what's what's around you, what what's happening, and everything else. You've got to be able to walk away from that. And I guess that in that same instance, you've got to decide what is it really that you can do. And if you can't fix something, then quit worrying about it. You know, if you can fix it, fix it. If you can't, quit it. I love it, you guys. This has been the Dr. Jason West America's Healer Program with my special guest, Dr. Scott Nelson, a unique, gifted, and fantastic healer that I've seen him do miracles for the last uh, eight years of us working together. We're sponsored by the West Clinic and Personalized Nutrition. We're so excited for you guys to uh, join us next week. We're going to be talking about additional medical miracles. We'll see you guys on the next segment. We'll be back next week to share more of his expertise, so don't miss it. Until then, have a great week.